What is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we are going to be talking about something big that has just hit in the 3D printing world, specifically Chroma Canvas, Bamboo Lab's new feature that some are calling the Hue Forge Killer. And we'll just stop right there. It's not the Hue Forge Killer. We are going to dive into everything in today's video, but if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead, just do it so you get more amazing 3D printing content just like this. Recently, Bamboo Lab released something called Chroma Canvas. Now, I have been a beta tester for this software for quite a long time, a couple months, maybe two or three months. And it is a really unique system that Bamboo Lab has taken inspiration from Hue Forge from to create 2D images in 3D prints. And I almost showed you, I almost showed you my print, but I'm saving it. I'm saving it for the reveal. So I'm not going to do that quite yet. Essentially, what it does is it takes your 2D image and converts it into a 3D layer. It is a really cool piece of tech that allows you to blend different colors together to get a really cool result. If you're familiar with Hueforge, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. What Chroma Canvas actually does is a little bit different. You see, Hueforge will base your layers off of luminance, moving from dark to light. Chroma Canvas is actually going to break your photo up into two to three different regions. You'll then select a palette that you can either make yourself or use one of their pre-made palettes. And then boom, you get an instant multi-color print. It is like a click standard mode for Hue Ford. Honestly, a pretty cool innovation on that technology. It's really fast. It creates pretty clean prints and it is super beginner friendly. Like, like you just click a couple buttons and boom, you have a, you have a print, you have your bookmark and I'm not going to show it to you but you have a bookmark. It's pretty, pretty neat. And have built-in tools for cropping. You can curve your edges with bevel tools. You can even add a hole in your bookmark for things like earrings, or if you wanted to make um, like a hole for your tassel for your bookmark, you can do that as well. It's a pretty neat feature. And with as cool as Chroma Canvas is, it is not Hueforge. And it is absolutely not designed for deep, color shading pro level printing like Hue Forges. And I really do appreciate what Bamboo Lab has done here because when you go to their website and I'll show some screen grabs in a little bit, they do put in the bottom right hand corner a little tag that says if you want more pro level features or prosumer kind of software, you should go check out Hue Forge. And it does link Hue Forge on the official Bamboo Lab page. Thank you, Bamboo Lab. That means a lot. Um, I know that that wasn't in the beta and I saw it when you switched over here to the, the full release. And I really do appreciate you at least linking to Steve's Hue Forge in the software. That's a pretty cool move, even though we'll talk more about that kind of dilemma here in a little bit. So that is Chroma Canvas. Fast, you apply your Instagram type filters to an image, you get really cool blending, and boom, you hit print. It's even already done in a 3MF file, so all you have to do is open it and hit print. You don't even have to do color swaps or anything crazy like that like you need to do in Hueforge. So that's a pretty cool feature. But what is Hueforge? Now, Hueforge is what we talk about on this channel all the time. If you don't know what Hue Forge is exactly, go check out my beginner's course. It's up here in the corner. You'll absolutely love it. And it will give you the handlebars that you need to dive into the program. Hue Forge is the OG filament painting workflow. It's powerful, it's flexible, it's insanely customizable. Like you can do some incredible things inside of Hue Forge and it gives you absolutely full control of your filament transmission distance, allowing you to use something like a TD1 to use your own filaments to blend in really well, something that Bamboo Lab does not let you do. It lets you manage the geometry of your actual photo. You leverage luminance values moving from dark to light to get beautiful shading. Um, you can get really cool gradients. You can do exact color match and more. There is some incredible things that you can do with Hue Forge. If you've ever seen one of those crazy 3D printed Hue Forges with shadows and highlights and fades and all of those things, it was probably a Hue Forge because Hue Forge can do some really incredible things. But the catch is that Hue Forge has a steep learning curve. We talk about it on this channel all the time. Learning Hue Forge is a headache. It is hard, which is why I'm here dedicated to getting you up to speed with all things Hue Forge. So hopefully we can close the gap. But regardless, Hue Forge is difficult 
and it requires some learning. It requires some patience, but it will give you very, very, very high end results. The only limit in Hue Forge is yourself. The only limit in Chroma Canvas is Chroma Canvas. So let's compare the two. I did two 3D prints. Okay, you can see them right here, one Hue Forge and a one Chroma Canvas. Now, they are the exact same image. One is five colors, the Hue Forge I did with five colors because I could I could use a different filament that I wanted to use and I got to load it in. The Chroma Canvas here is only four colors because you are locked into using Bamboo Lab filaments with Chroma Canvas, which makes sense if you're inside the Bamboo Lab ecosystem, but I didn't have that skin tone in a non-Bamboo Lab filament, and so I chose to just run with four filaments. The unique thing is, is that there are pretty stark differences between both. One gave me better detail, one printed faster, and one gave me the flexibility to use the new filament, which you know is the Hue Forge. So let's talk about the Chroma Canvas print. It's this Naruto guy, um, and here he is. Um, I'm going to show him to you. This is a bookmark that I made leveraging the brand new Chroma Canvas software. My autofocus on my camera is not that good. I'm going to try and crop in for you guys. And this is the print that we got. I used the very basic settings inside of Chroma Canvas. I also um, had to bring down the thickness of this Hue Forge or this Chroma print um, by quite a lot. This And it's still an incredibly thick print. I'm not sure why. Um, we'll dive into that when we actually talk about the Hue Forge. Um, some things that I like about this print is I love the shading in the hair. It did a really good job with the gray value on this print, getting that to be nice and bright. One thing that I don't like about this print is how thick the white section is. You can see that the white piece here is almost double as thick as the red and black and gray put together. I don't know why it wanted to do that, but it is... Um, it's honestly not good to feel. I don't like that look on this print. Now, the unique thing about this print, and I want to pull up the exact print time um, for these files here. Let's go ahead and open them up. The Chroma Canvas print took exactly one hour and 20 minutes to print. One hour, 20 minutes. And that used a total of 21 grams of filament. And it's cost me about 53 cents to print this chroma canvas print. Now you can't really see it on screen. I'm going to try my best. Actually, you can see it a little bit. You see the print here where it looks like I have some first layer problems. Um, you can actually see through it at some points in the image. Now, I don't know why that happened at first because I printed this one first. I thought it was my printer. Maybe I had some maybe base layer problems or my flow rate was a little bit too low. Um, but I printed the other bookmark on the same exact printer using the same exact filaments. And what you'll see is the Hue Forge actually doesn't have that defect. And so I'm not sure if it was something that Bamboo Lab software did. It's very translate, like you can see through the print at some points in here. So I'm not a huge fan of that, um, but we did get really good detail. This is a very fun print. And if you don't know how to use Hue Forge at all, and you load it into Chroma Canvas, and tossed in this photo, this is a pretty good result. Like this is something that you could be very, very happy with. Um, but with me, I, I'm honestly not happy with this print. This print is not sellable for me. Like if I was going to a market and I wanted to sell my bookmark, I would not sell this bookmark. It's way too thick up here. It's actually pretty sharp too. I don't like that. Um, and this quality here on the back, I'm not a huge fan of. Now, I didn't change a ton of settings. I just changed the thickness of the prints and then did my own custom palette. And this is what I got. I'm sure there are some other settings inside of Chroma Canvas that we could set and do to get a good looking print. Um, but I didn't play around with those because I wanted to use just the basic set of tools that anyone loading into the program for the first time would have used. And this is what I got. Okay, one hour and 20 minute print time. Now it's time for the Hue Forge. Um, now, some of you are gonna look at this and say, well, Victor, the Hue Forge, it's not worth it. Um, the quality is negligible, in my opinion. And that's your opinion. If you think it's negligible, that is that is that is your kind of thought on the software and your thought on the end result. And that's great. Um, in my opinion, though, the Hue Forge looks a lot 
a lot better. And I'm gonna try and get my camera to autofocus here as best as we can. You would think an expensive camera could do it. Okay. Um, and so this is our Hue Forge print for the bookmark. Now it looks incredible. And you can see, there we go. You can see that the skin tone here um, is actually a skin tone. And that's because I decided to use a beige brown color to get a skin tone that I really, really liked. The detail on this bookmark, especially up here in the headbands that you can see is much, much higher. If you pull up this bookmark here and hold them side by side, you can really see the difference between the two. And I'm trying to get it to focus for you guys. Maybe I'll just take a picture and upload it. Um, but this one is just very washed out, especially in the headband. I'm going to get like real close to see if we can get it to, to pop in here. Okay. Especially in the headband up here. Okay. Um, just roast me in the comments, whatever. I'm trying to make YouTube videos. That's all I want to do. Um, and then the, the Hue Forge is actually, there's, you can, you can actually make out the symbol. You can actually tell what this is, um, pretty clearly. And it, it looks very, very good. Um, the other thing about the Hue Forge is that it is nowhere near as thick as the Chroma canvas. You can see if I put them kind of back to back, just so you get a picture of how thick the whites are. This over here is the Chroma canvas from Bamboo Lab. Look at the white. Look at how thick that part of the print is. And then you look at the Hue Forge. The Hue Forge is so much thinner. The geometry on the Hue Forge, I love so much more. The sharp points don't exist. It's not going to cut me if I hold it. And we don't have that weird kind of see-through problem that we had on the Bamboo Lab one. trying to get so that y'all can see it a little bit. You see it there? I can actually see through that a little bit. This one, it looks proper. And I also really like the gray shading on this one probably a little bit more. It, it's more subtle. You get a better shadow with the Hue Forge. Now, this Hue Forge took me, um, it actually was quicker for me to make than the Chroma Canvas, partly because I'm still learning Chroma Canvas um, and Hue Forge is at this point becoming very second nature. But if anyone was trying to color match this bookmark, I would say it should take anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes. Um, and if you are just learning and you dive into color match, it could take you up to 45 minutes to just get the hang of the program um, to be able to color match it. But I like the Hue Forge print more. I think it's higher quality. The red is a bit brighter. I was able to play around with skin tones because I had a different brand of filament. And I think the shading is just a little bit crisper with the Hue Forge print over the Chroma Canvas print. So that's a direct comparison. Also, just so you guys know, the Hue Forge took one hour and 12 minutes to print. It used 16 grams of filament and it charged me approximately 42 cents in filament to print that. So 53 cents, I believe it was for the Chroma and 42 cents for the Hue Forge. And we probably saved about 10 minutes printing the Hue Forge over the Chroma canvas. Now, you could say that that time is saved with using something like Chroma Canvas over having to color match it inside of Hue Forge, but we're not talking about that because everyone's skill level inside of Hue Forge is a little bit different. So, which one should you use? If you are looking to start learning Hue Forge or continuing your learning in Hue Forge, or should you just switch to Chroma Canvas. And honestly, if you want speed, five minute setup, quick bookmarks, quick charms, beginner friendly tools, good enough styles with palettes, no color match, no color pop, um, and, and you just want to get a good shade on an image, then sure, give Chroma Canvas a shot. Remember, the ceiling on Chroma Canvas is Chroma Canvas, not yourself. Chroma Canvas will be the thing that limits you. As compared to Hue Forge, if you want professional premium prints, detailed shading, gradients, full color control, color match, color pop, Etsy quality results, if you want to call it, something that I am comfortable selling um, the physical prints of, 
then I would still recommend Hueforge. Hueforge produces a better quality product, a higher quality product right now over Chroma Canvas. Now, it, it does mean that you need to learn Hueforge. Hueforge is not easy. The, the learning curve to learning something like Hueforge is pretty steep. And that's where you have to do that cost benefit analysis to determine if it's worth it. But thankfully, YouTube channels like myself, and there are a couple more that I'm actually going to link down in the description, like Neil Koi Prints. We are committed to creating high quality tutorials for you to be able to learn Hueforge faster. One of the really unique things that I offer is one-on-one -on -one Hueforge coaching. It's where you can book a time for us to sit down for 45 minutes to actually, for me to tutor Hueforge and to teach you one-on-one -on -one personally how to get good at Hueforge. Get good. Um, I do that. And so if you're wanting to learn Hueforge, but you're just a little, you're just a little daunted by all that Hueforge is. And I really want to encourage you to check that out uh, because it is something that's really unique that I don't see anyone else offering that can help catch you up in your Hueforge progress. I'm going to leave links to all that good stuff, including my Patreon, where that one-on-one -on -one coaching is down in the description below. So here's where I'm at. Bamboo Lab, it's it's obvious they took the core idea of Hueforge and they tried to make it more accessible. And honestly, I do have mixed thoughts about this. On one hand, I love when people get better and easier access into cool 3D printing technology like this. This is really unique and there's not a lot of things out there that do it and making it more accessible and easier to use is a huge pro. But on the other hand, I'm not a huge fan when big companies like Bamboo Lab swoop in and copy ideas from creators who built the space from the ground up. So how this will play out in the 3D printing community, that's yet to be seen. We honestly don't know. But here's the exciting part. Chroma Canvas is not a replacement for Hueforge. Hueforge is still alive and well, and you should really genuinely look into learning it for yourself because it's an incredible program with incredible capabilities. But it's not the only new player in the game. In fact, there's something coming. You may have even heard of it. It's called Colors. Actually, actually, I'm going to save the name of it for a future video. Let's just say this. The competition is getting good. Hueforge, Chroma Canvas, and this new mystery software that I'm excited to reveal to you soon. Not mine, just one that I came across that I'm excited to make a video on. Man, the future is bright for 2D, 3D printing. So here's my challenge for you. How are you going to stand out as more competition enters the playing field, as this becomes more accessible to people in the 3D printing community, how are you going to stand out when everything is becoming the same? How are you planning to be different in a world that suddenly has access to the same tools as you? Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.